Hotep Boo to part two of our videos on the trickster gods, where today we'll discuss the side of the trickster called Aon, the baboon men. Now, Aon corresponds to the part of your intellect, the part of your mind and thinking that is tricky. Specifically, it's the part of you that justifies bad behavior. It's the part of you that makes excuses for things and rationalizes wickedness, meanness, cruelty, and lack of integrity. You see, when the Egyptians wanted to visualize the tempter deity, the part of you that when you're at a crossroads of life, a decision between good and evil, right and wrong, at that crossroads, he appears. And the West showed him as the devil figure on the one side of your head and the angel on the other side of your head. The good and the bad speaking to you. Whenever you're speaking to yourself, you're often speaking actually to a deity inside of you. You're having a dialogue with an archetype. Sometimes you're speaking to an ancestor. And if you're spiritually sick, spiritually ill, you might be speaking to what we call dark deceased beings, beings who are of low spiritual energy. But for the most part, people, when they're speaking to themselves, are actually speaking to a god within, an angel within. And Aon is the part of you that justifies doing wrong, makes excuses for doing the wrong thing. And so, he's tricky that way. He's able to spin something in a way that makes it sound good and makes it sound righteous, but you know it's dirty and wrong. Aon is the lord of excuses in your life. When you're playing games with yourself, playing games with people's minds, playing games with your integrity, Awan is very powerful in politics. He's the lord of politicians. People who are masters at tricky words, spinning something that is wicked, like supporting tobacco, supporting alcohol industry, lying about their political dealings, embezzlement, corporate greed and deceit, lying, all these things belong to him because people who are able to be slick with their words are strong with Awon. Now, Awon owns all roads. So does Sebek and Apwat. All trickster deities are called gods of the roads. The roads refer to the synaptic pathways of your brain. The actual nerve tendrils resemble tiny little streets inside of your head. And each tendril has certain folds in it that create a pathway of information. So your belief systems actually form little tiny microscopic roads in your brain called synapses. So when you believe something, your thoughts are walking down a certain road or pathway of thinking. So through fractal self-similarity, he also owns external roads, like the streets and the pathways outside. So as Lord of Roads, it is taught that Awon, who's called Eshu in Yoruba, Elegba, Alagbara in the Yoruba, Santeria systems, the roads always end with a toll booth, meaning you've got to pay. When you lie and you're tricky and cunning and manipulative like Awon, you're going to pay for that one day. Your lies will end in a consequence. So he was the policeman of the gods. He made sure that if you're lying and being unrighteous and duplicitous, that at some point you're going to pay for that. And people who trick and deceive, think, oh my goodness, I can do this all day long. People are stupid. They're so gullible. There's an idiot born a minute. 
And the monkey begins chirping this BS. But if you study the baboon god and you begin to cultivate his mysteries in your spirit shamanically, he will teach you. You think you're being slick. You think you're fooling someone. But in the end, you're going to be caught in your own web. He owns all mazes. And when someone's lying to you, BSing you with a car sale, lemons of a car, or trying to steal your money, or trying to persuade you this product is wonderful and could be a panacea to your life, a bunch of BS, what most commercials on television are, what most advertisements are, a bunch of malarkey. Eventually, the people that drummed up this BS are going to pay. He says, I guard the scales of karma. He's often shown sitting on the scales of what we call ma'a, or ma'at, the scales of truth. And he watches them to see who's playing with the truth. As such, he becomes the god of karma. He is the policeman of karma. And if you keep playing around being tricky, he will have you caught in the middle of your own maze. Many people say, I love you, you're the one, and they lay all these sweet honey tongue words. He's called the god of the honey tongue, with poison on that tongue as well, where he's manipulating you with sweet words. He's buttering you up. He is smoothing the way in order to strike, to manipulate you, to take your money, take your love, take your heart, and to work you. So, people who study him learn how to spot him. When you chant to him, you become immune to tricks. You become immune to liars. You spot them a mile away. You're not deceived by people's smooth words, their slick conversations. And you learn that if you're gaming in life, you're going to pay. But also, if you invoke him shamanically, if someone's trying to trick you, they have an immediate consequence. It's as if he jumps off of you onto them and it beats them because baboons are very violent creatures when angered. In fact, the word for angry or for fury is shown as a baboon pounding a stick in the hieroglyphs. Which brings us to the other side of our own. He is your words and he is a war god. He was invoked for war. This means that most wars, be they wars within your own mind, wars in your relationships, wars between nations, are first started with words. That words can cause great destruction. And if you're not careful, you can create all levels of war by speaking carelessly, by not thinking before you speak. As the god of ideas, concepts. Wars are often fought over beliefs. He's the god of belief systems. So you have one system fighting another. You have Christians fighting Muslims. You have people who are democratic or Western people looking down on people who are indigenous, thinking they're primitive. There are all kinds of battles waged because people don't believe the same thing, so they go to war over an idea. And when we have these problems, like the war in the Middle East and the different religious groups and this type of thing, we say, oh my goodness, the baboon is out of control. This means that the shamans must now come in and placate the baboon spirit. Placate, do rituals to calm down the baboons in the minds of these nations, in the minds of these religions. When the heteros attack the gay community, it's their, their beliefs are trying to attack our beliefs. So it becomes a battle of beliefs. So he's a very rich metaphor for how words and concepts and beliefs can create great havoc and chaos. Imagine having a baboon left unattended in your house.
You go to work, you leave the baboon out of the cage, you come home, there's going to be a mess. If the mind is not disciplined, if the mind is not trained, it creates chaos. It's all over the place, it's babbling, it's unfocused, it's first here. Monkeys are never focused for long. So when the baboon and the person is not tamed, that person's mind can go crazy. The mind splinters, and at the extremum, it makes you schizophrenic. You have many separate personalities. Now, the baboon and all the trickster gods are called tricksters for one main reason. They are your left brain hemisphere. The part of you that cannot see holes. It cannot see complete pictures. So imagine you're looking at a mosaic, tiling on the floor of a beautiful, let's say, garden scene. Aon, Sebek, the trickster gods, will only see a tile. A blue tile. And they say that's a blue tile, it's three inches by three inches, and it's made of a certain kind of material that's a certain weight and a certain index of hardness on the most scale, and they'll go on and on and on about a lot of data about that one tile. But they'll never see the tile as part of a larger picture. So they'll see, oh, there's a red tile. They'll leave the blue tile and go to the red one and do the same kind of neurotic OCD focus on that one tile. The trickster gods trick you into believing things are not connected that you're not linked to the earth, that you can support industries that poison the rivers and think you're not linked to that. Well, you got to drink that water. Or industries that create exhausts like cars and things. Well, you got to breathe that air. Or that by lying to someone over here on Tuesday will have no effect in your life a year later on a Sunday when someone lies to you. You see, the trickster has you believe things in life are not connected. Things in life just kind of happen randomly, like evolutionary theory that, oh, it's kind of by chance that nature perfectly harmonizes all its parts, that animals adapt perfectly to their environment. You see, they cannot see holes. They're not holistic. They're divisive. He's the god of racism, of hetero insecurity, what some call homophobia, of sexism, or hetero male insecurity. All the isms belong to him. Because he's telling that person's mind, well, I'm different from that person. We're separate, you see. And that's true on some very simple level. But deeper, you're linked. We're all one. We're all part of the same field. So, this is the teaching of the baboon. Slicksters, liars, temptation. And remember, when you're trying to justify bad behavior, you're going to pay. At the end of that road, the toll booth waiting for you. And the price could be very high. It could be going to jail. It could be losing your soul, losing your family. It could be losing yourself. So, learn to spot the baboon. Learn not to let your beliefs fight other people and create wars for no reason. Stop arguing so much. He loves to argue. And understand that the baboon should be squatting as he's shown in the picture here. Sitting. Meaning the mind is tamed through meditation. Calm your monkey mind down by meditating, by breathing. He was the god who is shown with the moon oftentimes, reflecting the light of something greater. The baboon does not create his own ideas. He reflects that of other peoples, of books, of information. But also, the moon means to relax and to go within to an inner yin lunar state of reflection. So may your mind learn to sit in reflection, reflection and to meditate. May you calm your thinking. May you focus your mind on the scales of truth. And may you flee from the lakes of fire of temptation and the lakes of deceit full of serpents of cunning. Long live the gay shamans of Egypt. Long live the golden beetle. Hotepu.